absolutely. So, <laughs> good evening. I would like to thank the organizing committee for the kind invitation to talk about the important role cardiac CT has to play in the, assess in the assessment of the tri tricuspid valve. And I would like to start by reminding us why we should consider cardiac CT in every structural heart disease. ECHO is an exceptional tool, is the first line tool, but sometimes it comes with limitations. In terms for, in, for instance, in terms of acoustic windows, CT can actually overcome many of these limitations. It, it has high spatial resolution, providing excellent anatomical and functional analysis of the tricuspid valve apparatus, highlighting its relationship to surrounding cardiac structure, while in the setting of uh, tricuspid interventions, it can minimize procedural complication and exposure time. Cardia echo is one of the pillars now of the multimodality assessment of the tricuspid valve. It can uh, study the tricuspid valve morphology, measure the right heart, SVC and IVC, and allow a more comprehensive vascular assessment and um, in this case, the, the venous an, uh, assessment. By calculating the anatomic orifice area, we can, we can have a semi-quantitative semi parameters of the tricuspid valve severity. To have all this information, we need at least a 64 slice CT, or ideally a more advanced dual source CT or volume CT scanners that come with a larger ZEND axis coverage and a shorter temporal resolution. We acquire the, we scan during the entire heart cycle, so we can have reconstructions every five to 10 percent of the RR cycle. The CT protocol involves an extended scout from the external auditory canal to the lesser trochadier, uh, paying attention not to miss the often enlarged right atrium, and finishes with an additional delayed, not gated scan for venous access assessment. In order to have the maximal quality uh, of the scan and homogeneous and smooth right heart opacification is key, avoiding strict and beam hardening artifacts. We use uh, not the standard but dedicated biphasic or much better triphasic contrast agent injection protocols that are based on a mixture of contrast and saline and we finish with a saline flash. We can use the test bolus or bolus tracking with a technique with the region of ROI to be placed in, in many structures, uh, ideally at the middle of the right uh, heart, ventricle um, in order to avoid early or late triggers. However, in the vast majority of the cases, we need to assess the right coronary uh, artery at the same time, so we have to shift to our standard thoracic uh, aorta triggering to allow us for simultaneous right and left opacification. So, uh, using multiplanar reconstruction, we can have dedicated right ventricular views in order to stu study the subvalvular apparatus, the, uh, the papillary muscles, the corda, uh, the leaflets, and the commissures. We can even uh, have cinematic, uh, cinematic uh, images, and we can assess the regional goal motion abnormalities or the septal motion. In a similar way as we do with ECHO, we can even perform a volumetric analysis. And, this, and, uh, the, uh, and uh, the, the values that we get with cardiac CT have been uh, extremely validated and correspond to the ones that we get from the cardiac MRI. And this is important because the right in ventricular ejection fraction assessed by CT or MRI is a prognostic, important prognostic pr predictor in patients with tricuspid uh, regurgitation. Using this volumetric method, 
we can have an indirect method of TR severity as per CMR by subtracting the left ventricular stroke volume from the right ventricular stroke term, uh, volume, providing that we, we don't have any uh, cardiac shunt or significant valve disease. And this may be helpful in patients with unfavorable echoacoustic windows when, uh, when CMR is not an option. An indirect sign of TR severity is the early opacification of the IVC or hepatic veins. We can calculate anatomical surrogates for TR severity using cardiac CT. We can calculate the anatomic regurgitant orifice area during mid to peak asystole or the tricuspid annular area during mid to end diastole. Using the MPR, the multiplanar reconstructions, with the plane through the tricuspid valve. And through, the, and through the right ventricle, we can have like a short axis view of the annulus, which is planar. We can do measurements here, uh, area, perimeter, and dimensions. And we have to do those on both systole and diastole, as we know that, that, that the tricuspid valve is actually a dynamic structure, and its area changes during the cardiac cycle. We have to bear in mind that actually the tricuspid valve is not planar, it's a 3D uh, structure, a D-shape, saddle shape structure. And CT can help us by giving us three-dimensional parameters. In order to do that, uh, we use an indirect method, which is actually the same as we do with the mitral valve. We place, we rotate the, the plane of the measurement along the uh, RV uh, plane, and we manually place seed segmentation points at the level of the arterial and posterior heads. Then we get, then uh, we get uh, this image, and then we apply a mathematical model, which is this red line, and this is actually the 3D perimeter of the annulus which is then uh, projected to the short axis, and then we can, we can do new measurements now in both systole and diastole. And there is a high agreement between this indirect method as assessed by transesophageal and CT. We, can, do, we ap can apply the same technique to measure the gap, the tricuspid valve area. And studies have shown that this gap as we measure from the, the anatomical recurgitant orifice area, as we measure for the CAR CD, have uh, correlates very strongly with the vena conductra as assessed by 3D TEE, and moderately uh, correlate with the right ventricular and right atrium remodeling. Oops. In recent, in recent years, especially with the evolution of the uh, tricuspid valve intervention, cardiac CD has an additional role to play in selecting the appropriate patients for the interventions and uh, by providing, uh, providing us accurate tricuspid valve size. There are different interventions that require different extra additional uh, parameters to be measured as well as the diameter tortuosity of the femoral iliac IVC uh, veins. And although cardiac CT is not generally, rec uh, not generally commended to edge to edge repair and surgical tricuspid valve repair replacement, if we still have the data before, we can measure the tethering uh, height, area, angle, um, giving predictors for regard and TR, or even help with the catheter agulation of the edge to edge repair during the procedure. Another example is uh, when we have to use the spacer device, for instance, forma here, where actually, uh, except uh, we have to measure the RV uh, size perpendicular to the tricuspid valve to the, uh, RV to the RV insertion point of the device, the, the height and width of the anterior papillary, mus uh, anterior papillary muscle, 
as well the diameters of the left subclavian vein, the left axillary vein. In terms of transcatheter um, re 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 replacement, except for the right ventricular and the right atrial um, measurements, we have to pay specific attention in the uh, RCA on the right, uh, right coronary cause and the distance uh, of the right coronary uh, artery to the tricuspid annulus. A distance, a distance less than two millimeters considered to be unfavorable and because of the proximal implicament. Um, with CT, we can provide um, the best fluoroscopy views for procedural planning. For instance, the first one, which is uh, RV2 chamber, uh, can, be, uh, can be used for the trajectory of the device through IVC in the right coronary artery. The second one, which is a three chamber view, can help with the coaxility of the delivery system. And the third one, which is actually a short axis view, can uh, assist with the co-planner deployment. Using dedicated softwares, we can actually simulate um, specific uh, valves in order to have the precise size to prevent right ventricular outflow uh, obstruction, as well as any paravalvular leak. If we, are, if we are going for a, a heterotopic valve implantation, then C, a, C, a CT can help by measuring the SVC diameters and areas at different levels from right atrium, the IVC diameter at the a, RA and IVC a, point, as well the height between the IVC and the first hepatic vein, <laughs> Another important uh, area is, um, that, that cardiac CT can help is to understand the interaction of the leads with the tricuspid valve. However, this, must be, this can be um, a confront, uh, this can be limited because of the significant blooming artifacts that the, uh, that the um, from the leads as and and the echo might be more, uh, uh, would be better. We can use CT for the follow-up, especially when we have uh, increased gradients through the, the valve. Uh, we, can do, we can do 4D, um, functional 4D, uh, to see, uh, to look for the, um, how, the, uh, how, how, how good the, the valve is uh, opening and closing to identify thrombus formation from leaflet motion. And we can use also 3D printing, which is an interesting area, as well as fusion imaging that may help with the, during the procedure. In conclusion, multimodality imaging in, assess, in the tricuspid valve assessment is key. CT is important tricuspid valve assessment essential for patient selection and pre-procedural planning, while during the post-procedure uh, course, uh, it can investigate the causes of valve dysfunction. Thank you. Thank you very much, very comprehensive talk. Uh, I think that uh, we have uh, discussed all the strengths of uh, cardiovascular imaging modalities uh, in evaluation of um, tricuspid valve, morphological data for a tricuspid valve and uh, right ventricle, uh, and all the other anatomical uh, um, uh, data. So, uh, do you have any, uh, any questions or? Thank you very much for the presentation. The CT is ACG gated, right? Yes. So, if the patient has atrial fibrillation? Yes, we, with the advanced technology, with the newest card, it's not any issue. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to have as high temporal resolution as possible. So beta blockers may be That's the enough. key to that, to have a, a, as close as 60 bits per minute. Exactly. But with the, high, uh, with the advanced, the dual shores, or, uh, or the volume scanner, this should not be an issue. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, we, uh, a question, okay. Dr. Nikas. Hello, it's Dimitris Nikas from Ioannina, Greece. Um, just a short practical question. 
Sometimes we find difficulty to uh, see if uh, tracheostomy regurgitation caused by pacemaker or whether the fibrillator mm -hmm. lead it's the cause or if it's caused the adhesion or puncture of the tricuspid leaflet. Do you think that this is, uh, the CT could help us more than the uh, cardiography to find out what's the main reason? Because this is something, I don't know, I would like to have the opinion of the, the panel. This is really difficult for us sometimes to differentiate which is the, the main cause. Yes, it can help sometimes though. Uh, you can see actually with cardiac CT, with functional imaging, how the lead interacts with the commissure or the leaflet and see if, there, if, if, it, if it is stuck there or not. But sometimes we may have blooming artifacts because of that lead and then maybe uh, echo is a much better choice. So uh, generally yes, but it has its own limitations. You cannot predict, actually, from the beginning. Okay. I would like to thank all the speakers, the moderators, and all of you. And we continue to the next.